Hey guys, Fallout here, and today we're going to take a closer look at the Night Stalker Hunter, the numbers behind their abilities, and how to best utilize their talents in PvP. Overall, the Night Stalker has an okay super and a great neutral game, with some very useful perks on the skill tree, but we'll get to that in just a bit. Let's kick things off by taking a look at their grenades. First up, we have the Spike Grenade, which you may recognize if you play a Defender Titan. The spike grenade can attach to any wall and sprays out continual damage for about 3.5 seconds. This grenade has the ability to deal a maximum of 117 damage per second to anyone standing in the damage cone, meaning that the spike nade can potentially kill a guardian at full health, but realistically that won't happen very often, as they probably wouldn't just stand in the damage cone until they die. Next up is the vortex grenade, which you'll probably recognize if you play a voidwalker. The Vortex Nade creates a large damage zone which lasts for about 4 seconds and can potentially deal up to 95 damage per second to anyone standing inside. Like the Spike Grenade, the Vortex can also kill a full health guardian, but only if they stand directly in the damage zone the entire time. Finally, we have the Void Wall Grenade, which is unique to the Night Stalker. Throwing one on the floor shoots fire out in opposite directions, making a fairly long wall of fire on the ground. This grenade can potentially deal a maximum of about 95 damage per second to anyone standing in the fire, and it lasts for about 5.5 seconds. Just like the other options, the Void Wall can kill a full health enemy, but again, only if they stay in the fire without leaving. With other subclasses in Destiny, there's usually one grenade that stands out as the clear winner for using in the Crucible. All the Night Stalker grenades are kinda equal. They have situational uses, and each one can get the job done if you use it the right way. I personally like the Vortex Grenade because it covers a pretty large area and it pairs really well with the Night Stalker melee ability, which I'll get to in just a minute. All the grenades are usable though, so just go with whichever one you like best. Moving on to the melee, the Night Stalker's melee ability is Smoke, and in my opinion it's one of the best PvP melee abilities in the game. Smoke is kind of like having a second grenade. Using it lets you throw a small orb that detonates on contact into a small cloud of smoke that lasts between 2.5 to 4.5 seconds, depending on which upgrade perk you take. Doesn't sound like much, but hitting an enemy with it can really ruin their day. Enemies hit by smoke lose the ability to run, jump, use grenade and melee abilities, and their vision gets messed up. It's really awesome, and anyone hit by smoke can get picked off pretty easy. It's really important to note that because smoke is a melee ability, you can activate both smoke and your regular grenade almost simultaneously, which is a damn good combination. Because smoke slows down your enemies to a crawl, you can basically trap them in a grenade if you throw both of them right away. They'll either get trapped and die, or get so weakened that finishing them off will take almost no effort at all. There are three ways of upgrading your smoke, and the first option is Envenomed, which adds a toxin that damages enemies within smoke. The max amount of damage you can deal to an enemy using Envenomed is 107, about half health. This is a pretty straightforward choice, and probably the one I use the most. Damaging enemies who get hit by your smoke is never a bad thing, and it just makes picking them off even easier. Next up is Vanish in Smoke, which lets you and your allies get temporary camouflage. If you've ever played a Blade Dancer in Crucible, the camo works the same way. You become a bit harder to see, and you get the benefit of being able to very briefly mess with the enemy team's radar. Unlike the Blade Dancer, the Night Stalker has the very handy ability to share this camo with teammates if they're nearby when the smoke gets thrown. Keep in mind you can only cloak your teammates if they aren't using their super. The camo duration is really short, about 5.5 seconds. I don't really like using this too much, but I have seen it used well before in smaller games like Skirmish and Salvage. If you want to use Vanish and Smoke and share some camo with your teammates, just remember that you've got to use it and make your move fast before it wears off. And keep in mind that just because you're camo doesn't mean that you're impossible to see. Last up is Snare, which lets you stick your smoke nade to any wall where it will wait for a bit and then detonate if an enemy gets too close. Snare will let your smoke nade sit for a full 10 seconds before it either gets triggered by an enemy or auto detonates, where it will then give off smoke for about 4.5 seconds. Snare can be helpful if you're good at predicting where you think enemies will go, and is also pretty good at letting you bait important objectives like the zones in zone control or enemies' bodies in Trials of Osiris. Now let's talk about the Night Stalker's super, which is Shadow Shot. Shadow Shot lets you take out a bow and fire a void arrow across the map. 
When that arrow hits anything, it will create a small void anchor. Any enemy nearby will automatically get tethered to that anchor. Tethered enemies lose the ability to use jump, grenade, or melee abilities, will move very slow, and will also take an extra 55% damage from whatever you hit them with, making them really easy to kill. Also, if you tether an enemy who is using their super, you will immediately take them out of super mode. This is really handy in shutting down enemy teams who are super chaining, especially the Sunbreaker Titan, who is currently being used a ton in PvP. Enemies have the option to shoot the anchor and try to destroy it, but it's probably a better idea to just defend yourself from enemies while you wait for the tether to die, because the anchor will only break after it's taken about 400 damage. If you hit a non-supered enemy dead on with your shadow shot, it'll result in a one-hit kill, followed by setting up the void anchor wherever they got hit. It's very important to remember that there is a delay between your arrow hitting a target and the anchor appearing. Not a very long delay, about one and a half seconds, but just remember that for now, I'll tell you why that's important in just a minute. Before I do, let's talk about the upgrade options for Shadow Shot. First, there's Bloodbound, which makes tethered enemies explode when killed and shares damage between all tethered enemies. I want to clarify a little bit about that whole sharing damage part. Tethered enemies do not take 100% of the damage that you dealt to one target, they just get a portion of that damage. At first I thought it was a constant percentage of shared pain, but that's apparently not how it works. From what I can tell, the amount of damage shared to others depends on how many enemies get tethered in the first place, and then it caps off at a certain number. If you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, just take a look at this. When two enemies were tethered, I shot one in the head for 647 damage and the other guy took 167. Same thing when I tethered two and shot one in the body. The capped number of shared damage depends on how many people get tethered. Even though the other enemies don't take the full damage you deal to one guy, it's still pretty easy to kill groups of tethered people just because of the fact that with Bloodbound, their bodies explode when you kill them. I like this perk mainly for PvE, but it's still usable in the Crucible. Not my favorite choice though. Next, I want to jump to the bottom here and talk about Quiver. This perk gives you the ability to fire off three arrows instead of just one at the cost of reduced tether range, which I'll get to in a little bit. If your goal is to just get straight, no hassle kills with your super, this is a good choice. Just hit three of them right in the face for a one hit kill. Each shot still creates a void anchor, but this perk is probably better used for straight one shot offense. Last up is Black Hole, which has increased tether range, can last longer, and can tether more targets. Let's talk about the tether range, which I haven't gone into yet. The range on Black Hole is the best by far. Here's a comparison that shows you how much more tether range you get when you pick Black Hole over both Quiver and Bloodbound. That's a big difference. If your goal with Shadow Shot is to play defensively and counter other supers like Hammer of Soul or Storm Trance or whatever, I highly recommend going with Black Hole. Remember earlier when I said there's a one and a half second delay between your arrow hitting a target and the anchor appearing? Well, here's why that's important. The short tether range offered by anything other than Black Hole combined with the anchor delay means that hitting an enemy in super mode right in the face with an arrow won't tether them if they're already running, which they probably will be. They are literally able to outrun the range of the tether before the anchor spawns and grabs them. This is why Black Hole is so good at shutting down enemy supers. Don't get me wrong, you can still use Bloodbound and Quiver to anchor and shut down supers, but you have to have almost perfect placement and timing or you will get nailed. It's way easier to just do it with Black Hole. As far as tether duration is concerned, Black Hole will let you tether enemies for a full 8 seconds, rather than the regular duration of 5. Not bad. Moving on, let's take a look at the first column of skill tree choices, starting at the bottom with Lockdown, which makes your grenade and smoke effects last twice as long. This is a great perk if you want to make the Night Stalker's neutral game even better. Having longer lasting grenades is really good, but I need to clarify how lockdown works with your smoke because I had some assumptions and they were all wrong. For Envenomed, picking lockdown will have no effect on the damage output of your smoke. No matter what, the maximum damage you'll ever be able to cause with Envenomed is 107. What lockdown does is just make your actual smoke cloud last longer, from 2.5 seconds to 4.5 seconds. 
It won't do more damage, but you'll be able to slow down enemies for longer, which is always nice. For Snare, no matter what, the maximum duration that the smoke will wait for a target before detonating will always be 10 seconds. Again, Lockdown just extends the duration of that smoke when it goes off from 4.5 seconds to 8.5 seconds. Vanish and Smoke is kind of disappointing. Lockdown takes the duration of your camo from 5.5 seconds to 6 seconds? Yay? Maybe don't take this perk if your goal is to use camo. Anyway, next on the tree is Light of the Pack. Killing tethered targets creates orbs of light for your team. Just so there's no confusion as to how Shadow Shot works, you normally generate orbs from just tethering enemies, no matter if they live or die. With Light of the Pack, every tethered enemy that gets killed will produce one orb. So just as an example, if you were to tether and kill five enemies, you would get a grand total of eight orbs for your team. Five for each one killed, and three for tethering five to begin with. This is a great way to make orbs for your team, and a really good strategy if you're ever in large games like Clash or Control and want to get a super train going. Last is Courage of the Pack. Killing tethered enemies increases armor and recovery for you and nearby allies, and it can stack up to five times. Regarding the boost to recovery, here's a comparison of regular max recovery compared to the five times bonus. For armor, I did some testing with a minimum impact auto rifle to find out that you can only tank an additional 2 body shots with the maximum plus 5 armor bonus, which translated roughly to an extra 26 or so health. These bonuses last for a grand total of 30 seconds. Look, I'm all for more health and more recovery, but these bonuses are kind of minimal, and keep in mind the strength of what I showed you are at the maximum amount of times 5. So let me ask you this. Why would you take this perk over Light of the Pack? If you had the chance to kill 5 enemies with one tether, would you rather have a little extra health and recovery that went away after 30 seconds? Or would you rather make 8 f***ing orbs of light for your team to kick off a crazy super train? Again, getting 5 enemies with your tether is probably going to happen very very rarely, but still. In my book, more orbs of light for your team trumps out a small, temporary bonus to armor and recovery. Now, let's take a look at the next column of choices, and we'll start off with Keen Scout. Sprint and sneak faster, gain enhanced tracker, aka radar, and the ability to mark targets that you damage. This is a great perk. Having the ability to mark targets is incredible. Even though marked targets will still be able to tell that they're being marked, it's still really useful. The mark only lasts for about 6 seconds, but the knowledge of knowing exactly where your enemy is for those 6 seconds is great, and you can get some really satisfying kills. The enhanced radar is also really helpful. You'll get a better idea of where your enemies are on the map, and damaged enemies will even appear as a tiny little dot. For the movement, here's an idea of how much faster you move with Keen Scout. And here's how much faster you move while crouch walking with Keen Scout. Definitely noticeable. Overall, just a great perk to have, and one of the reasons the Night Stalker has such a damn good neutral game. Now, let's jump to the bottom for the next perk, Shade Step, which gives you the ability to do an evade. This perk is equally as good as, if not better, than Keen Scout, and that's saying a lot. Aside from being able to instantly get you out of dangerous situations and confuse enemies in close quarters combat, Shade Step has the ability to let you take literally zero damage from a certain number of grenades in the game that rely on an auto-targeting system. I've already made a video that goes over that, and if you want to watch it, check it out right here. In short, Shade Step is amazingly useful and a great perk. If you don't know which to take between Keen Scout and Shade Step, don't worry, I got you covered. We'll get to that soon. Last up is Predator, which lets Shadow Shot stick to any surface and wait for prey. With regular Shadow Shot, your Void Anchor will disappear within 5 seconds, or 8 if you're using Black Hole, but with Predator on, you get an extra 30 seconds while your Anchor waits for someone to wander by. 
While this is definitely a handy perk, it's really hard to justify taking it when the other two options are Shade Step and Keen Scout. If you want to make the best use out of your Shadow Shot, then maybe use Predator, but I almost never use it. Alright, let's quickly talk about Exotic Armor. If I leave a piece of armor off of this list, it's because I feel that it's not as good for PvP as the ones that I've mentioned. First up, let's talk about what may be the best overall choice, which is Graviton Forfeit. This helmet gives you the perk Shade Step for free, meaning that with this piece of armor, you can have the ability to max out your neutral game by taking both Shade Step and Keen Scout. Great piece of armor, and I recommend it highly. Next up are the Sealed Ahamkara Grasps, which give you an additional melee charge and makes it so that melee damage has a chance to automatically reload your primary weapon. The automatic reloading of your primary weapon is okay, I guess, but what we're really interested in here is the fact that this gives you a second smoke grenade. Like I said, smoke is a really good melee ability, and if you like using it, definitely give the Ahamkara Grasps a try. Moving on, we have the Knucklehead Radar, which gives you the ability to keep your radar when aiming your primary weapon. Straightforward, and still a good piece of armor in year 2. Next up are the Radiant Dance Machines, which let you move faster when aiming your weapon. Another straightforward piece of armor, and always a good choice. Last but not least, we have the Crest of Alpha Lupi, a piece of armor that I'm sure everyone's familiar with by now, which lets you revive teammates faster, be revived faster, and generate more orbs when using your super. Lupi will always be a great piece of armor for game types where reviving is possible, especially in the Trials of Osiris. As always, I've put together some sample builds for the Night Stalker that you can try out on your own in the Crucible. Remember, none of this stuff is carved in stone. Always use whatever armor and perks you feel most comfortable with. I've just put these together as a jumping off point. Alright, that's it for now guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, then maybe share it around and give it a like. Also, feel free to subscribe to my channel, because I'm always working on more content. Hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.